it always ends up being that I go watch a Paul Thomas Anderson movie by myself, and yet I am fully immersed in whatever genre he throws in or what adventure he brings to the cinema. Where are we going? About go movies or not? Do not take your kids to watch this movie. I like magic. What the fuck did we just watch? Half of the fucking movie is about the Joker. Uh huh? But uh, but yeah, it's a decent movie. Hi everyone, I'm Ronan and Chain. I just got back from watching Licorice Pizza, the newest film by writer-director Paul Thomas Anderson. It stars Alana Haim and Cooper Hoffman, kids in the 1970s who are have a 10 age gap, 115-125, and Cooper Hoffman falls in love with Alana Haim. And it's a weird thing because there, there's a 10 years difference and yet there's this connection between them and yet they're trying to be separated within themselves from each other and there's just this energy around them and I dug this film I dug this film yes that is a weird concept to grasp but each character has their own aspirations and while there is this connection that is odd they have their own aspirations that they want to go forth in their lives and yet at least for me I cared about the characters and I was willing to follow them and had fun in whatever hijinks they were going for. Um, it also has Sean Penn, uh, Bradley Cooper, uh, the, one of the Safdie brothers, I believe. I believe it's Josh Safdie brother. Uh, Benny, Benny Safdie. There's, I believe, the actor's name is Tom Waits, who plays the director Rex Blau, who's like, roll camera one, roll camera three, and action. Uh, that he was fun. Uh, Sean Penn. There's a moment where Sean Penn's riding a motorcycle and just starts yelling, "I'm coming, Nancy." Which is from the trailer, which I thought was hilarious seeing Sean Penn drunk uh, while trying to recreate a movie at the backyard golf course of a restaurant. And the my favorite scene of the movie it involves Alana Haim, Brad Hoffman, and Bradley Cooper. Who Bradley Cooper's playing John Peters, who's this uh, um, known producer. At least I know about him through uh, um, other people. And it involves a big truck. And I don't want to say more because I want you to experience that scene by yourself at the cinema. But it is hilarious. It is uh, a little unnerving because you don't know what the hell is going to go on. You don't know if lives are at stakes. And yet you're in for the ride. Um, I'll say this about John Peters. I believe he was uh, Barbara Streisand's um, hairdresser. Or hair, hair, somebody who worked on her hair. And then they started dating. And I believe he became a producer. And was one of the producers... Uh, in Batman, the 1989 film. And the reason I know about him is because of the late, great John Schnepp, who was a director, an animator, and a TV host for a lot of uh, uh, companies and, and uh, channels on YouTube. He made a, a documentary called The Death of Superman Lives. And one of the big, big people behind that film was John Peters. And he's a very uh, interesting f uh, character, if you will, person. And Kevin Smith, the uh, writer, director, podcaster, he's talked a bunch about back in the days in the 90s, meeting with him, and there's stuff, there's lines of that both men have said of how John Peters interacts, that I'm like, yep, Bradley Cooper played up just like how I would have thought, and there's stuff he says and whatnot, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is the funniest shit I've ever seen. He's great in it, but uh, Alana Haim, uh, she kicks ass ass in this film and I mean I fell for her just as much as as, as a, a Cooper's character Gary Valentine and yet you know I'm not gonna spoil stuff but I'll say that just so people could be like are they is it weird? Like, they never the, the two characters never have sex they don't have sex there are moments where at least specifically Gary is pulled to that extent but there is I think and even in his youth sort of respect that as much as he has Google, his Google for this woman, she he does have some respect for her and then yet stuff happens and whatnot, but they do have a connection and they're both, especially Alana, trying their best to not, that it can't be that way. And uh, yeah, it was it was such a fun, fun film to go through. There's there one of the years, I believe, or it's within the year where there's a gas outage there's Vietnam in the background, and it was just, I had fun with it. 
again, I know it may not be people's cup of tea, but the interactions between characters and whatnot, it was, it was, I had so much fun with this film. The soundtrack is killer. I gotta buy that on CD. Uh, the poster, that, that uh, it's like hand-drawn, or it looks hand-drawn, of Licorice Pizza, I wanna get and put up on my wall, but I had so much fun with this film, and I'm, I'm a, I am a fan, big fan of Paul Thomas Anderson. I haven't seen Magnolia or Punch Drunk Love. I, got, I, gotta, I work on it, I gotta, I gotta get behind that, but I grew up with Boogie Nights. Inherent Vice is fascinating, I dug it, but I mean, I grew up with There Will Be Blood, the master is incredible, and I saw Phantom Thread in the cinemas, and I was just experienced to see that film with the relationship between those characters as well. So, I recommend this film. Go seek it out. And it has, I love that the, the, the title, Licorice Pizza. I love it. But yeah, that was my review of Licorice Pizza. If you dug this review, subscribe to the channel, grow it out more, like this video, and I'll see you next time.